due to a mutation, basically, an inactivation of both alleles of the retinoblastoma gene, which is called RB1, which comes from both parents. And this is uh, what's often in the epidemiology literature, I'm an epidemiologist, called the two-hit model of carcinogenesis. So it basically takes two hits, two inactivations, to, uh, to create this disease. So in that sense, it's, uh, it's a genetic disease. And this gene is, called, is, is a type of what's referred to as a tumor suppressor gene. And it's known where it's, it's very well uh, identified. It's located on a particular chromosome, chromosome 13, in all the cells of the body. And uh, the disease itself can be bilateral, affecting both eyes, or it could be unilateral. The incidence, the uh, extent to which new cases occur, is a, is a very rare phenomenon. In the United States, each year there are about two to 300 new cases of retinoblastoma. And the risk is approximately five to seven cases per 100,000 live births. That means for every 100,000 births, uh, we would expect to see five to seven cases eventually of retinoblastoma get diagnosed. And typically, most of them get diagnosed before the age of five. Now, this is a little bit about a little technical part, but it's important to my observations and my comments about what's been done. There are three types of retinoblastoma. And the first type, one that might, might seem most obvious, is basically called familial retinoblastoma, and it's heritable. And that means that the uh, child inherits a mutated uh, gene from the parent, which is present in all cells. And then the second uh, hit, so to speak, uh, the second allele is later inactiv inactivated uh, somatically in the retinal cell. And those are, that accounts for about 10% of all cases of retinoblastoma. The second type is called sporadic heritable. And this results from a new mutation in parental germline cells at conception. So in other words, the gene isn't inherited from the parent. It's something that occurs at uh, conception. And again, the second allele is later inactivated uh, somatically in a retinal cell. This accounts for about 30% of all cases. And the majority, about 60% of all cases of retinoblastoma, are called somatic, or they're not inheritable And that results from somatic mutations after the retina forms in a single developing retinal cell. So that suggests that, uh, at least for those latter two types, there are factors other than genes that influence the, uh, the occurrence of this disease. And exactly what might they be? Well, we really don't know. There's very little known about retinoblastoma, in part because it's rare, and so it hasn't been studied that much. But there are a number of hints from the scientific literature, and here are a few things that appear to be related to the occurrence of retinoblastoma. It's known that uh, older paternal age increases the risk of retinoblastoma in the offspring. Uh, lower maternal education is associated with retinoblastoma. It also differs according to race, ethnicity, and nationality. We know, for example, there's a relatively high risk of retinoblastoma in Navajo Indians and Alaska Natives, as well as in Sub-Saharan Africans. Uh, and now this, the rest of this becomes even more speculative. Uh, even though there's a number of uh, pieces of evidence that suggest that, for example, a retinoblastoma is related to exposure to radiation. And of course, that's relevant to the situation I'm about to describe. That includes diagnostic x-rays, uh, radiation therapy, as well as uh, environmental sources of uh, radionuclides. And uh, we also know that uh, there's an association between the occurrence of retinoblastoma and uh, op the occupation of the father, often thought that some kind of occupational exposures prior to conception might influence in particular that second type of retinoblastoma that I referred to as heritable, as sporadic heritable, excuse me. And there, there's some evidence that other factors might influence retinoblastoma, for example, diet, in vitro fertilization, human uh, papillomavirus. One of the newest groups I'd like to point out that I've seen join the community watchdogism, if you will, is um, a group of mothers from the valley. And they're all new mothers. Their children are babies to toddlers. And these children have all been born with an incredibly rare cancer called retinoblastoma. Some of these infants are either blind in one eye or blind in both. Um, and this group of mothers, based on where they live, um, so I want to say it's Valley Circle area, live directly downwind from the site. 
many of them grew up on that side of the hill. Um, and so they are one of the groups that has really stepped up and have started testifying at hearings. Cindy Hayes, followed by Bob Weaver, and, and Marietta Sperry. Hi, my name is Cindy Hayes, I'm here in representing about 20 families of children with childhood cancers. And um, we all met together at that children's hospital, and we've all um, had several children diagnosed with retinoblastoma, oligodendroglioma, osteosarcoma, very, some very rare cancers. And uh, we really found it interesting when we attended some of the meetings put on by the UCLA people, the, um, Dr. Morgan Stern and um, Dr. Cohen. We found it very interesting that all of us lived in the wind pattern of where the wind comes off in the sense of that field lab, we thought it was very odd. Um, this is a picture of my daughter before and after her treatment, and I thought you might want to get a picture of that representing 20 of these. So what we decided to do, since I'm a scientist, we decided to look into this further and look into some epidemiological studies and questions some of the physicians at UCLA about these things and found that there have been several studies done in different parts of the world linking these cancers to radiation. We've also talked to the um, Cancer Registry, who is currently doing an investigation of these cancers in the area. And um, with some help with some epidemiologists at UCLA, we found an increase just in retinoblastoma of over 800% in the last three years. First, I want to start with the evidence of retinoblastoma clustered in West Valley. And this comes from this uh, community group. Uh, that identified, at least over the last few years, nine confirmed cases of retinoblastoma in the West Valley. And these cases were born between 2000 and 2004, and they were diagnosed uh, between 2000 and 2005. Uh, four of those cases are bilateral, and five are unilateral. And all the cases were conceived uh, while the parents lived in one sector of the West Valley. And this is... Uh, a map that shows the location of those nine cases, and this was uh, prepared by uh, Cindy and Jeff Mays, at least they gave it to me. Um, and what you see here is just a, a section of around 101 uh, in uh, south of Lincoln. This thing here is my help. In Woodward Hills in Calabasas. And you'll notice that each one of these red stars is one of these nine cases. And you'll notice, as I did right away, that five of them just cluster around this little area. It looks like almost a circular, or semi-circular road. And then there are a few others that are spread out. And all these cases, they sort of occur in this region with a heavy location right there. Santa Susana Field Lab is right about there, approximately. And so it struck me that uh, this looked a little bit coincidental. All of these cases all have occurred in a, in a sector that was just sort of running southeast of the Santa Susana Field Lab. 